Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and I'm here to bring you today's live paper crafting class and I'm so excited about this one. It's so funny because on Monday, uh, just a couple days ago, Teresa was here with me. Um, she helps me out in the office on Mondays and I was telling her, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I had an idea and, I, and, and so I came up with it yesterday, kind of last minute, sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited about it though because it's super cool and um, it's a box that has been altered and then I threw in some punch art with it. So we're going to have fun with punches and boxes and 3D stuff. Um, yeah, all right. It is Wednesday, April 13th, 2022 at 11 a.m. as I'm broadcasting to you live, 11 a.m. Central Time. So if you're watching in a different time zone, just adjust um, and know where you're at so that you can join me again next time. Um, this video is going to be linked to my blog post where, I, where I'm going to share photos. I'm so excited, I'm stumbling over my words. Where I'm going to share photos, um, the measurements, the supply list, uh, this video will be in it. And that will all go live at 12.15 p.m., so about an hour and 15 minutes from now. So you'll wanna join back. And in the description of the video on YouTube, you can find that link. I'm doing something with Facebook a little different, so I didn't know if I could add the link or edit the post or whatever. I'm, I'm playing around with it. So um, the next time I go live on Facebook, I'm going to chance it and try to do some alterations and editing so that I can get the description in that video as well beforehand. I think I've been able to do it before, but last there was one time where I did it and it didn't work. So I'm gonna chance it next time. But for now, you Facebook viewers, so sorry about that. Um, it You may not see, <laughs> You may not see anything but the title, but we're going to have fun. I want you to sit back and relax. On YouTube, we have Trisha Josephs, who is my moderator. She's going to be helping out, and she has um, she has the wrench symbol next to her name. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually tag her in a post. You just start typing the at sign, the A with a circle around it, and then start typing her name, T-R-I-C-I-A, and you can ask her questions. You can um, say hello to her. And anyway, she's here to help me out because I cannot respond to YouTube comments afterwards. So, the live ones, I should say. So, um, and on Facebook, I have a helper too because it's so much easier for me to just have a moderator who is answering questions along the way. So please welcome Lisa Marshall, Marshall over on uh, Facebook. And so her name isn't highlighted or anything, but she is there paying attention. She's watching to see what you write. Um, okay, so on that note, we're gonna go to uh, supplies and measurements. Now, as you are watching, I would love for you to chime in, say where you're from. Oops, let's see here. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. There we go. Say where you're from. Tell me how long you've been crafting. Tell me how long you've been viewing my videos. That's always fun to read. Um, tell me if you're new to my lives and that sort of thing. I would I love to know about you and I get to know my viewers by name. I don't know your faces very well or some of you I haven't even seen at all, but um, I love to be able to read those and it feels like I have my friends with me stamping, so comment away. Um, here is the measurement supply list. You can see I've got some photos in there of the projects we're gonna be making, some really tall boxes. I called it Bees, Bunnies, and Bright Boxes. <laughs> So, um, and you can see the date is on there. This sheet is downloadable. So when my blog post goes live at 12.15 p.m. Central Time today, you're gonna to be able to click on that blog link and you're going to be able to access this PDF. So don't worry about screenshotting it, but you can take a look right now if you wanna gather up supplies and craft along with me, feel free. We have some measurements in there for the boxes. The rest is basically all scraps that we're gonna punch. So. And I love this. I can now see comments on both, from both YouTube and Facebook. I don't know if anybody who's been watching me before on these multi-lives now where I can stream to both places, I've only been able to see Facebook comments come up on my device right here. But I did a little differently today, which is why I was saying I was afraid to put some editing in the Facebook post. But I can see comments from um, both places and I love this. So right now I'm seeing comments from Joan and Denise and Carol and Vicki, two people from each place. I'm um, just loving it. Anyways, technology, it's so amazing. Okay, we're going to go to the desktop now. So if you comment, you get entered into a prize drawing. So we have prize um, prizes from last week that we're going to be announcing from the viewers who um, chimed in on those lives. 
on Facebook and YouTube. And then Trisha will be drawing a couple names from the YouTube Live winners uh, or commenters today. So comment away on that. These are the boxes we're gonna be making. Aren't they adorable? So we have a bunny on here and we have a bee on this one and the box lids come off like that. They're just so adorable, so stinking cute. So let me show you right now a box uh, assembly, <laughs> assemblage, what do you wanna call this? It's a bunch of boxes put together. I did this for a past paper pumpkin kit several months back and I used these elegant, um, let me make sure I have the name right here, elegant classic, simply classic. Simply Classic Treat Boxes. I used one of them on the top to house this extra box here. And, and you can see the way it comes together. So it's basically a top and a bottom, and they're very easy to assemble. So I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna put one of those together right now because we want it assembled when we do the box. Linda, you've been watching me for close to four years. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So you're gonna push the sides like this so that they open up, and you can see that the base and the top both look similar in design here. I'm gonna zoom in just a bit so we can see things a little closer. Okay, so this is obviously the top. This is the base. This flap is the one that you're gonna fold in first, and there is a score line inside on the edge here. So you're gonna score, you're gonna fold it right there, and you're gonna leave that folded because that's gonna create a nice solid base on the inside of your box. These flaps then go in on the side, which makes sense, and then this one gets folded over and this tab goes down inside this section and that secures it. And it makes a little squeaky noise, it's kind of fun. <laughs> hey Lisa. <laughs> All right, so we've got that. And now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to this side. So we're gonna fold this side in and if you look, you can see same sort of thing where you've got your um, your piece folded in and it's nice and flat and then the tabs go in and then this top piece. Now you'll notice they've got like this little ribbon coming out the top. Do you see that? That's how they applied it. They, they, they added it by, um, they've got a little slit in the top, they've got the ribbon loop going through and then they've taped over the top of it to secure the base of the, the loop. So that goes in like that. And it's so adorable how these these boxes come together, right? So we're gonna extend the box, obviously, but first let's do some punch art. So we're gonna bring in some punches, and these are the two punches that we will be using in order to make the bunny and the bee, okay? Oh, I love it, you guys are telling me about your weather. <laughs> so fun. So let me bring some scraps over and some tools. All right. So let's first put together the little bunny. Super cute. Some of you may have been seeing some punch art with the Ladybug Builder Punch. This is the Ladybug Builder Punch. Sorry, it's a little dirty, but you punch it out, then you put the wings on the back and you have instant ladybugs. Um, so what we wanna do is we wanna punch out the body and then we're gonna trim off the antenna and that is gonna make the round little head on our bunny, okay? So we've got our bunny, and our bunny needs ears. So now we're gonna take this punch, and I know some of you have been using the small, um, the small daisy punch to do ears, which is great. That's actually, um, it, it's a little easier to use that, but I'm using this punch because we're gonna be using um, this punch for other things, and I didn't want you to have to invest in three punches if you've never done this before. So we are now going to take and punch um, a couple branches. And actually, we're just, yeah, let's go ahead and, and let's just do one for now. Okay, so this is gonna become the ears, these two pieces here. So we wanna trim into this little spot. If we don't trim into that spot, we will have a hard time adding those ears without like, I don't know, some kind of odd nose coming out from underneath it, right? So we need to trim off that extra leaf right here. Punch art is so fun. And then that will go on like that. And it looks like a more natural bunny in that its ears aren't perfect, right? Okay, so then we take the leftover piece here and we're gonna grab the fattest, shortest leaf, which, I'm sorry, the fattest, shortest leaf, which is this one here. And we're just gonna trim straight across, okay? 
that is going to become the tail. And you know what? I lied. We don't need to do that twice on the white. I was thinking of my... Uh, I have another one that I made that's a bunny on both sides. So we don't have to do that one twice from the white, except for when we make the toothpick one, which I'll show you later. So we're going to move the white off to the side here. We've got our bunny almost assembled, but now we want to make it sitting in some, some leaves, some fluffy grass. So I've got a one and three quarter inch, I'm sorry, one and a quarter inch wide strip here. If you have a larger strip, you're gonna be using up some of your cardstock to punch out this piece. But because we have a strip, we can just insert it into the area of the punch that we want. Does that make sense? So you're not wasting paper. Okay, so let's move those off to the side for a minute. Let's go ahead and assemble now. So we're gonna take and we're gonna trim off the end of each of these. And we're gonna kinda look at them in opposite directions. Cause a punched piece can be flipped over this is the way it looks when you first punch it out, and then we can flip one over like this, and we're going to, I think we're gonna bring them this way. <clears throat> yes, and we're gonna cross them over like that, okay? So that the inside or armpit area of here, of this leaf here, so it's right in this little spot here, links together with that spot on that one, okay? So they're gonna connect like that. And to do that, we're gonna add some multi-purpose liquid glue, which I've transferred into this fun little applicator bottle. Um, these are awesome. I do have a link to my favorite things in the description of the video. So you can find these if you like them, but they're great because you can, you can do like a real thin line of glue coming out. Okay, so that's now linked like that. I'm just going to let that dry for a minute. Let's go ahead and put the tail on the bunny. And with the tail, I think it looks great if it's lifted just a little bit. Oh, thanks, Judy. <laughs> if it's lifted just a little bit. So this is the top of the tail here, and this is the base of the tail. So on the base of the tail, we want just one glue dot. So we're going to stick on one glue dot on the base. There it is. And then on the top, we're going to put two glue dots because glue dots give a little bit oops sorry glue dots give a little bit of a lift let's use our bone folder to make sure it's on there they're an adhesive that have just a tiny bit of a lift to them so it gives them dimension you know oh there we go now i don't know if you can see but i have three glue dots on there I have two that are overlapped towards this side and one that's on this side towards the base. So we're going to just take and add that to the bottom of our bunny like that. And see, you can kind of see a little bit of dimension to it now if we hold it to the side so the tail's sticking out a bit. Now let's put some adhesive on the um, leaves that are in the center up top and right through here in the middle and we're going to line everything up using our grid paper. Our grid paper is great for making sure everything's straight and then we'll just set this bunny right here. Now before we push it all the way down I'm going to just adjust my leaves over here and kind of push them out a bit and my leaves over here and push them out a bit so I can see more greenery over there. So you, because the, the branches have, you know, the ability to bend a bit, you can make your, your leaves kind of twist a little. Does that make sense? All right, so then let's take our glue and put a little bit right here, lay our bunny on top of it so that we're picking up those ears. So a couple, uh, one ear is sticking off to the side, kind of like the wind's blowing it, right? It's a more natural looking bunny. All right, so there we go. Yay. Okay, these punches, by the way, were introduced in the January through June mini catalog, and they are carrying over, so no need to worry about that, but these boxes are going away. So you'll wanna get your hands on them. I'm gonna show you two other products that are going away also, but these you'll wanna nab up. I, I checked this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning when I woke up, and they were still there. 
So hopefully, I mean in the US store, I'm not sure about the other markets, but at least in the US market, they were there. Let's work on the B. The B is going to have a black body base and we want the antlers in that. So we're gonna punch like this. That way we save a bit of paper. We've got our body. We're gonna use these two to cut some strips, but we also need to make some wings. Now for the wings, we wanna fold over at least a half of an inch of vellum. Okay, so we've made a fold on our vellum. Then we're gonna come in to the side here and we're gonna punch like this. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving the folded edge away from this base of the punch, like, I, oops, sorry, <laughs> away from the base of the punch. I do not want to punch into this at all, okay? I just wanna go right up to it and I'm gonna punch it. And that way, the wing part here can still fold back in this direction. Why do I need that? Well, we're gonna attach the wing so that it can fly. So we're now cutting the side that wasn't as complete into kind of a V shape, and it doesn't have to even be pretty. I'm just gonna make it a little prettier though. There we go, it's kind of even looking now. So there is the wing that we're gonna attach, and then we want to punch out one more thing before we grab our trimmer. So we're gonna punch out just a little bit of this black piece here. And I've still saved this because I want to trim from it. But do you see that? Do you know what that's going to be? Did you notice? All right, let's take our trimmer and we're going to cut some strips. And I'm just going to stack these two pieces on top of each other and put them right up to the quarter inch mark on this side here. And we're gonna go ahead and trim. And we'll do it again. Move it over to the quarter inch area and trim. So two of each color should work. All right, it's time to assemble our B. For our B, we wanna first add the wings. So we're gonna put a little, little adhesive on the back side, and I'm just gonna grab a scrap here so I can add the adhesive this way. And I'm adding the adhesive with the seal. You could use the liquid glue if you want to. It's up to you. And then we're gonna fold this down. If you use the liquid glue though, be careful so that it doesn't seep into the other area of the wings. So I did that with one of my bees yesterday. Like I put glue on the backside, but it squeezed out and then it got under this part of the wing. We don't want this part of the wing to get any adhesive on it. So there we have the wings on our bee body, okay? Like that. So you can see they're flying away. Now we're gonna fold these back up a little bit and you can either use you know, the liquid glue here or you can come in with your seal adhesive, tape runner kind of adhesive, and add your strips like that. Whatever you feel most comfortable using. Just gonna press a yellow down, then we're gonna put this one right next to it. And I just stuck the yellow one right underneath where the wings fold. And I'm just altering back and forth. Now, hopefully, if you added the wings, just below the neck area a tad, you're gonna end with your black right at the edge here. Now if you didn't, you can always add one more yellow strip if you want to, or just leave it black because the body underneath is black, right? Although you might have adhesive showing, so you might have to add a yellow. So now we go ahead and we use our very, very sharp, tiny scissors to get in here and carefully, we wanna avoid cutting the wings, don't cut your wings. We're gonna come in and trim up all of these little strips so that they just follow the line of the bee body. It's now a bee, it's not a ladybug anymore. Ta-da! And you can fancy him up. I mean, look, like look, with the bunny too, you can fancy the bunny up. You could shade like on the sides a little bit of um, very light pool party. So if you want to give it more of a, a white crisp look, 
shading with blue, a light, light blue like that will make it really seem super white, um, give it some dimension. Or you could shade the body here. You could add some um, Crush Curry or Bumblebee ink, which is retiring. Um, or you could use the Daffodil Delight, which is the color I used here. So da Daffodil Delight is the, the cardstock color. And you can just put some color along the edges and it gives it more depth. All right, now it's time to alter a box. So we're gonna bring in our cardstock, which is going to stretch our box. And I'm using Rich Razzleberry. And now you know why I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We're gonna take and cut an eight by eight piece of cardstock. Eight by eight, real easy if it's square, right? So eight inches by eight inches. Right now this is eight and a half in this direction, so you're just cutting off a half inch strip. Save that half inch strip, or if you want an even longer one, you can cut a half inch strip from this piece because you'll notice this is longer, and we're not gonna use that for the box, so there's an option for you. But I'm gonna use this one here. And now we're gonna take this piece, and because it's square, we can go ahead and score in either direction, but you just wanna score in one direction only. All right, so we're gonna score at just under two. It's gonna be one and seven eighths. So you're gonna go seven eight, I'm sorry, you're gonna go one eighth inch back from the two, four, six, eight measurements, um, and they're, you're, they're gonna compile. So if you're a math person, it's gonna be two inches minus an eighth, four inches minus two eighths, six inches minus three eighths, and eight inches minus four eighths. And these are the actual measurements if you want them. Again, they're on that PDF that you'll be able to download. So we have one and seven eighths. Then we go to three and three quarters or three and six eighths. Then we go to five and five eighths. And then we go to seven and a half or seven and four eighths. I love math. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fold along those lines just to get the creases more evident. So let's bring in our bone folder and make those nice and crisp. I got the idea for extending the boxes when I was thinking of a holiday coming up in the summer. And I'm gonna show you those boxes at the very end, um, but I am, uh, so excited that I was, you know, able to do it for kind of spring designs too. So, um, Patricia asks, what was the extra piece for? You'll find out. So this is going to be used at the top, um, as a decoration thing. And the longer piece you have, the better. Does that make sense? But I'll show you. So here we go. Oh my God, this, oh gosh, I should say gosh. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. I saw your comment. Who was that? Tracy Carter, oh my gosh, I forgot the stinger. But you know what? You can either put it between or like I've done on both my bees, my other bees that I have done, I have, um, sorry, I'm just gonna grab this. And someone told me, use a rubber band. It'll help hold that, but I don't know. Don't want to. <laughs> just kidding. No, I don't know. I just like the white bottle. And if I put a rubber band on it, it might make it not look so fancy. <laughs> so. I don't know all right so there we go yes that's what that was for thank you all right we'll let that dry there's our little stinger yes now our bee is complete okay back to the box so this is going to wrap around I'm so sorry oh my gosh I can't believe that came out of my mouth um, we need to decorate this layer so we're gonna go to six inches this way you can use some new glimmer paper that we're gonna have in the upcoming catalog. You can use the new glimmer paper if we start with a six by six piece. So we're gonna start with a six by six piece here and we need to cover four sides. This comes from our rainbow glimmer paper pack and the full sheet of rainbow glimmer paper looks like this. It's amazing, 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 amazing. We're gonna turn it this way and half of six inches is three and half of that is one and a half. So we're gonna cut at one and a half inches and again at one and a half inches 
one and a half, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna turn it over though because it's a little bit easier on your cutting blades if you cut glimmer or glitter paper with your blade um, cutting through this portion first. It's just a little bit, I don't know, doesn't dull the blades as quickly. So there we go, there are our four pieces. All of them are one and a half by six and we got four from one six by six sheet. Now we're gonna take a little tool that I made with some cardstock. It's just a quarter inch strip of um, cardstock and I'm going to place that at the bottom here. And it doesn't matter if you go this way or this way, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna lay it like this at the very bottom. Oops, I need to have my paper upwards. This is where we're folding. So it's gonna be decorating the outside, not the inside, Rachel. So we're gonna put, place, the, place this along the bottom and just kind of hold it there as we work with the pieces. And I'm seeing a hint of the rich razzleberry underneath here, just because I think that that will give us, it will make them come to the right spot a little bit easier. I'm gonna now use Seal Plus Adhesive. My Seal Plus Adhesive is a little bit stronger for something heavy like this but I'm also gonna be using it to, to seal the box. Now you wouldn't have to do this for, um, for the panels. You could easily use stamp and seal, but I wanted to introduce you to this adhesive because it's slightly stronger. It's um, a little bit different too. It actually has these little tiny um, sections, like little tiny, can you see here? Let's do this. Let's zoom in this way. That way the light is more on it but there's little tiny strips of adhesive in there. Oh, wow, you can't see them though, can you? Oh, bummer. Maybe you can now. Little tiny strips, so that's like sectioned off. It's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So we're gonna place that adhesive on these strips, but again, you could use seal, you could use the liquid glue, um, any adhesive you want. I'm gonna make my, um, pattern of dark to light coloring go from light to dark upwards. So we're going to place it like this in this section here. Same thing here. Now you could alter back and forth if you wanted to. And then this one. And again, the reason why I chose the Seal Plus is because I need it for the side of the box, which you could also use tear and tape adhesive on or the liquid glue, but I don't think the seal is gonna stay strong over time, but Seal Plus will, so. Okay, we zoomed back out a bit here. And I think this last one I can just eyeball. All right, so we've got our, our pieces within our panels. And next, we're going to turn it over and we're gonna put adhesive here no, is that where I put it? No, I put it on the outside. You're gonna put it on the outside like this because we want our, our edge piece here to get covered up and go away. Oh, I'm down to the last piece. <laughs> All right, so we'll just use some seal on the inside now. So here is our adhesive on the outside. This is the bottom of our box. This is the part that's gonna attach to the base. So when we flip it over, I'm gonna put just a little bit of adhesive along here and I was gonna use my Seal Plus, but I ran out. So let's grab this piece here, the box base. We're going to prop up our paper and we're putting our base down on our table and we're gonna put them together in any corner. You could have this corner go into this section here. You can have it go here. Um, we'll just go to this spot here. You're gonna wrap those two sides around it just to get it started, okay? You have ugly storms in Arkansas. I'm so sorry, Kendra. It's good to see your name. Good to see you pop up and hang out with us on the live on Facebook. Now we can wrap this around. You wanna wrap it nice and tight, okay? You don't wanna see any gaps in there. So we're wrapping it tight. And on this last one, again, you're stretching and pulling really tight to make sure that's connected down there. Then you can worry about up here. So now we're gonna just line everything up and connect it all the way through, okay? So you first wanna connect down here and then you can line up with that strip. And now you've got this cool little, it looks almost like a candle, doesn't it? Kinda. 
this piece can go along the top. So we're gonna add some, I'm gonna grab another seal plus. That way I can show you guys how to refill these things too, if you did not know. I always cut mine open because <laughs> it, uh, it's quicker. All right, so you're gonna take, and this is the bottom where the finger grips are. You put this right into that, like that. It all connects. And then this goes on top. All right, now we're ready. So we're gonna run this all the way down the length of our, hold on, hold on. Getting a new one started here. It's acting up on me. Just a little bit more in the center here. I don't know what happened. It disappeared. There. All right, so we have our adhesive all the way along with a nice, beautiful little center there. Either end does not have adhesive right to the end. I'm gonna recommend that you put a little bit of the white glue, the multi-purpose liquid glue, on the end of the outside one. Aw, thanks, Michael. Okay, now you're gonna find the seam to the top box piece. There is a section here where it's seamed together. Here it is. So this is where the box came together when it wrapped this way during manufacturing, right? So we're gonna start there, and I'm just matching that one up with our seam side for our box part we made. And we're gonna go slightly over about an eighth of an inch. Oh, I'm gonna go up higher too. About an eighth of an inch, maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then I'm gonna fold, and I'm gonna connect over here and I'm just eyeballing it. If this is something that's hard to do, you may want to skip this step or just use ribbon instead. And I'm just connecting it to each side as we go. And here you can see there's not much extra, right? That's why I was saying if you want to have a longer piece, you certainly can, or you can grab your glue and you can put just a tad under that spot there and then hold it down and let it sit for a minute, okay? All right, this box is going to have some fun embellishments on it. We're gonna use the classic matte dots. We're gonna have a sentiment piece that is going to be stamped on some black we're gonna use a stamp set that's new called Limited Edition. You won't be able to get it until May 3rd. And we're using this image here just for you because I think that works on any box, right? Just for you. So let us take and stamp that. I've got my white embossing powder from my Basics Embossing Powder Pack. We're gonna ink that up with Versamark ink and we're gonna stamp that down onto our black cardstock. Now, if you want to, you can use an embossing pillow type of thing, and that will help to relieve, get any fingerprints on, but you wanna do that before you stamp. I did not pull mine out, sorry. But this is a piece of cardstock that I have not touched much with my fingers, so I don't have to worry about too much oil on the cardstock, and I only see one little fleck there. So I can take and push it away with my fingers, or. I can grab it with the take your pick tool. There we go, clean it up a little bit. And now we're going to emboss this. So let's shut our powder, shut our ink, grab our heat tool. So we're gonna emboss, we're gonna add our B, we're gonna add these fun little guys, and then I've got some fun samples to share with you. I'm gonna get the heat tool going just because when it's hotter, it tends to heat faster, so that way I'm not kind of covering it over the top of this before I need to. And now we'll go ahead and wiggle it back and forth. I have it about two inches away from my paper. You can sometimes see a, cur a curl start to happen in your cardstock. Then you could go underneath and you can heat it that way. But either way, you wanna heat away from your fingers 
Now you can start to see it turning white. And there we go. If you overheat, you can make it look less shiny and kind of burnt out and stuff. So you don't want to do that. But that is the basics of basic heat embossing. Super easy. Let's grab one more punch. Um, and I'm only grabbing this punch just because it's fun and I haven't owned it or used it yet. I mean, I just, just bought this one. Crazy, right? Everyone needs this because what's great about it is you can punch. Oops, hang on. I must have some cardstock in there or something. Okay, there we go. You can punch your base like this. And then you can take and grab a sticky note, put it on this side, slip it, oh no, put it on the other side, slip it back into the punch like that. Line up those little grooves. You see those little grooves on the side there? You can line them back up. And here, I'm gonna hold it this side here. There we go. Line them back up. And punch and then you've got a different size piece you don't necessarily have the postage stamp size piece let's put some adhesive on the back of that and when you do line it up because there's a little grooves on the side you do want to kind of pop up the end a little bit so you know it's lined up with those grooves so this will go on the front of our box and we'll just call this the front Oh, I forgot to do something on here, but I can do it while it's sitting on top of the box. So the next step is to do some yellow on our white. So I'm bringing in the dark Daffodil Delight blends marker. And because we have a black background, we don't have to worry about the yellow showing. So we're just gonna color all of this white embossing in yellow. And now it looks as if we embossed in yellow powder. Fun! You could actually do kind of a multi-color look here. You could make this look rainbowy if you want to by doing this technique. Now after I've colored it once, I'm going to go back and just add a little bit more color because when you add a little bit more, it deepens it just slightly. There we go. So now we have yellow. Isn't that fun? Good morning! I love it. More names are saying hello. Yes, when you comment, you get into the prize drawings. So make sure you're doing that. Let's add our B. Let's add our B with dimensionals. Here are our dimensionals. You only need a couple. One on behind the head and one behind the abdomen. We'll peel off the backings. We're going to make our B position sort of right about here. And I know I have them coming straight up, but that's okay because we're going to make the um, movement of flight happen with these guys here. So zoom out, sorry, a little close there. We're going to take these black classic matte dots and we're going to stick them on. Now, if you're in love with the black ones, we do sell all black, but they're in this container here called the matte black dots and they're a slightly different size. So you can see there's two sizes, a small and a large, but we don't have the itty bitties like this. And I kind of wanted to use the itty bitties. So let's use an itty bitty right now. We're using the gummy end of our take your pick tool and we're gonna get a starting point here. And then we're gonna grab a big one and we're gonna make that come down like this. I'm gonna move this one over. He's, he went over to the left a little bit too much there, oopsie. Okay, then we're going to grab a little one and then we're going to grab a big one and another big one. And you can go back and forth on all of this. You could have all little ones if you want to. Little, little. I'm just trying to make it like my other one. Big. Come on, there you go. And then two more little ones. There we go. We have the movement of his flight or her flight. Our bee is flying away. Super cute, right? 
So there is one of the boxes. <laughs> now here is the other finished box. So for this one, I used my bunny on the front on dimensionals again, and I was gonna use the white little dots here. So there's white, vanilla, gray, and black, and I was gonna use them in kind of a hopping pattern. So a hop, a hop, and a hop. But then I thought, nah, let's save some. So let's just decorate the top where we have the cap of the box. I just put a small on either side. This is Green Galore cardstock embossed with white embossing powder. I did not color it. This is Daffodil Delight cardstock here. Did the same technique where I wrapped it with the extra strip. And you saw how we made the bunny. So there's that. This here though is one other item that is leaving us. So the rainbow glimmer paper, the classic boxes, wherever they went, here they are. These guys here, the simply classic boxes the rainbow glimmer paper, and this paper here, which I've loved up too. It's called Ombre Specialty Paper. So you got four sheets in there, one of four different colors. There's a purplish color, a bluish color, reddish, and yellowish. And so I use the yellow one on here. Then we have two other boxes. So let me show you those. For those boxes, I used the blue and red from this pack. And this is where my idea originally started going when I was thinking about extending the boxes. So I used the blue and the red to make kind of like a firecracker type of box. So it's a tall box for the 4th of July. And it just, I don't know, it just made me think of firecrackers when I saw this top part here, like that's what you light when you're going to light a firework. Thing, right so there's our firecracker box done with the ombre specialty paper that is retiring and then back here I have um, white shimmer uh, shimmery white cardstock so there's a little fleck of glittery kind of sheen to it these um, pieces of twine are from our where did I put those guys here they are simply elegant trim which comes in silver and gold and so that's that one. And then I have another box and I added on that box the metallic mesh ribbon and that trim. And this one I did with our basic white cardstock. And you can see there's a slight difference in the reds and in the blues. So if you like more of the warmer tones, you'll wanna get the ombre paper before it sells out. If you like the brighter tones, a little cooler and brighter, then you'll want to invest in this stuff, which is a new product coming out May 3rd. This is our, um, our 2022 through 23 in color glimmer paper. And it comes with three different blues and a red. So you've got your sweet sorbet. I, oh, I hope I'm saying these right. Um, sweet sorbet. Oh gosh, Tahitian Tide, Orchid Oasis, Starry Sky, and Parakeet Party. And that's the green. Woohoo! You'll have a bonus green, and you could maybe even punch out the leaves in the green or something. So those are my five boxes. I have um, I have one other thing to share with you. Oh, All right, here it is. Okay. So if <laughs> you're probably wondering why did she write skewers? On the um, on the list of supplies, so skewers and toothpicks. So I've got skewers and toothpicks written on there because you can take these fun little punch art pieces. You can flip it over and do another bunny body and tail on this side, and you can come up with a few a cute little um, topper for a cupcake or a donut because we couldn't find any cupcakes that had white frosting at the grocery store yesterday. <laughs> or if you want to, you could have a bee party and put them in like chocolate donuts or something. I don't know, just kind of fun. So I have treats for my kids and I will put saran wrap over the top of these and they can have donuts when they come home from school. They have no clue that I bought them yesterday. They're gonna be so happy. 
So <laughs> those are them. Those are the projects that you will see in photos on my blog post today. Again, the link to that is in the description of the YouTube video. It is not in the description of the Facebook um, post yet, but I promise you that I will add that in soon. Um, oh, I'm so glad that you liked what I shared, you guys. Make sure that you're commenting because now it's time for prize drawings. Um, we're going to do a live prize drawing with the face. I'm sorry, with the YouTube comments, and maybe in the future we will have um, Miss Lisa Marshall do one from the Facebook comments. We'll have to figure out if we can make that work. But for now, we have two winners from the YouTube one that um, Trisha will be calling. Before she does that, I want to share with you the winning names from last week's video. So last week we had a live, and um, let me just pull my computer into place here. We had a winner from YouTube, and that YouTube winner is the person who, like, these are from all the people who commented after that was done. So Miss Carla, Carla Sirach, Sirach, you won for the after live comments on YouTube last week. And from Facebook, all of you Facebook commenters got in on a drawing as well. And Tony King Alkire, you won for the Facebook viewers. So thank you so much for those of you that commented on the videos after the live was done. I really appreciate you chiming in. Um, make sure that you like the video if you did like it. Subscribe to my channel if you are not a subscriber already. Give me the thumbs up if you can. And then if you're on Facebook, I would love it if you would follow me on Facebook. And I have not posted my social media stuff. Crazy. So let me just pull those up here. On Facebook, you can find me at Stamp Your Art Out with Rachel. Um, that is my page. If you want to, you can also join my group. I have a Facebook group called Stamp Your Art Out Group. I tell you, I need to get an admin for that group, though, because I have a hard time keeping up with checking in with it. I'm, I'm so bad, you guys. Life is busy, I tell you. So right now we have some things going on in our world. Um, remodeling. Have any of you ever done remodeling in your house? It's fun and it's exciting to make these changes and I'm glad that we can afford to do so. But I will tell you, <laughs> it's a lot of time. Wow, holy cow, right? Um, I have a website, by the way. If you go to my website, you can find links to all of my social media areas um, in the upper right-hand corner. So visit me on, at stampyourartout.com so that you can view these posts and you can shop for products there, that sort of thing. All right, so all of you winners, you'll want to contact me with my email address. Miss, um, Miss Trisha, I need to announce my prizes or did you already announce winners? I don't know. So prizes for this week are, and I'll bring that back up here if I can remember to do so, but prizes for this week are basically leftover things that I have that are retiring, that are really cool, and I can't imagine just putting them away forever. So there will be papers, embellishments, ribbons. I don't know what I'm throwing in there, but it's gonna be like this surprise package. So to our two live winners on YouTube that, um, that uh, Trisha will announce here soon, and there she did, she announced them. So Sherry Rosnick and Lisa Edwards, make sure that you're reaching out to me at my email address. Um, to you two and the winners that we pick next week from the Facebook commenters now and any YouTube live, I'm sorry, YouTube after live commenters, you will also get a plethora of retiring product sampler stuff, okay? Um, all right, I think that's it. So let me, um, sorry, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring these back in for just a minute so you could peek at them one more time. Next week, I am going to be live. Um, no, I'm not. Sorry. Trisha, we have the week off. Lisa, the week off. <laughs> this is a hard decision. But um, because of all the remodeling and we have to like, we have to seriously buy our appliances now because it takes a while for things to come in. So I need to take off next week. We're going to go... Um, do some Easter stuff this coming weekend. Happy Easter to all of you who celebrate. And um, then when I come back from all of that fun, um, it's it, I will have just very little time if I, if I throw in my appliance shopping. So I'm so sorry, you guys. We're gonna take off next week. Have to do it for sanity reasons. 
Um, but I will be back again the week after. So the next live will be April 27th um, on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're at. I hope you can join me again. That will be 11 a.m. Central Time, so just do the time conversion for your area. And remember, retiring products are only available while supplies last um, through May 2nd at the very latest. And then everything from the current annual catalog that looks like this, anything that's from here that is retiring is going to be unavailable after May 2nd. I can't tell you how many people come to me years, months, days later and say, you mean this is gone? I'm like, yes, it's gone. And I feel so bad for them. So all of you that didn't know that, now you know that. And then uh, the new catalog will begin on May 3rd. Very fun. Um, anything else I want to tell you? There's new kits. We have a new Paper Pumpkin kit that's shipping right now to the April subscribers. And if you've not subscribed to Paper Pumpkin before, you'll want to get in on the May kit. So get a subscription started because it's going to feature new in color stuff. Um, the cards are going to be made with the new in colors. And then we also have a kit in the kits collection. Circular uh, coaster cards, they're calling them. So fun. You'll want to check those out. I will let you all go. Happy Easter. Happy Spring. Happy everything. <laughs> now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.